It's 88.5, the SoCal Sound, member-supported public radio serving Los Angeles and Orange County. Join us anytime by subscribing at thesoCalSound.org. My name is Hillary. So very happy to be talking to Hosier. How are you? Very well. Thank you so much. Thanks for chatting to me. Yeah, thanks for being here. Are you recovering from the big show last night? Yeah, you know, um, I feel good. I feel good. I, I got a good rest in. and good, Yeah. Good. yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was there last night, so I have some questions about the show last night. Oh, cool, thank uh, you. Yeah, so you're playing three nights at the Forum, the fabulous Forum. That's huge. And you said a couple of times last night that it's a special venue for you and a special room. Yeah. So can you talk about why? Well, it's, I mean, it's something I think on the horizon. I mean, it's, it wasn't even on my horizon for uh, for a long, long time. But I think just to play three three nights in the Forum is is a is a real significant milestone for me. Yeah, you know? Absolutely yeah. huge. Yeah, It was so fun being there. I have to compliment you on your fans. They were just the kindest people. Um, I just noticed a real sense of like community and kindness in the crowd. And I think that says a lot about you as an artist that you're attracting those kinds of people. Um, and I noticed every song you and your band started, every song, the room would just erupt in screams and for me as like a bystander and watching all this it felt really joyful and like really exciting and I wonder what that feels like to you is it something you get used to is it part of the job what does it feel like to be on that stage and have people just screaming for you yeah it's it's something that some party you never really gets used to I think um but first of all I mean thank you for saying that about the fans I, I find that to be the case also that they're a really conscientious uh, bunch of people you know they're really 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 sweet and um yeah i feel blessed you know and, and that's all them you know and uh uh but on the songs yeah like i think last night i was taken somewhat aback like at the start of the set like walking onto stage and and we would always get some some sort of reaction but like last night was was quite you know kicking into to the opening number um was there was a lot of energy you know so uh some party was always a little bit like oh wow you know yeah, yeah, it must feel amazing. Yeah, it's yeah, it's it's a really sweet feeling. Yeah. So you also said last night that you recorded your latest album here in LA. Mm -hmm. so I'm yeah. assuming you spent yeah. a good chunk of time here, and I'm wondering what are your favorite LA things to do when you're in town? Oh my goodness. Um, my time. I mean, I I was so engrossed in the work itself. Um, I did. It was the first time that I got to actually spend time in different neighborhoods so I spent some time out east and I spent some time kind of I suppose to you know I spent some time in like Silver Lake and 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 also like Abbott Kinney and Venice area and stuff like that and, and um so one big thing there was a nice and Studio City as well too it's at one point there was, I, I really enjoyed I mean it even just to be in in sunshine is a very different exp you know that's not something that's guaranteed from where I right. live in the world um so to enjoy spending time outside in a very different way um I enjoyed there was a few neighborhoods I'd enjoy walking and stuff like that and and I got I got a sense of um there was some friends of mine who were living here at the time as well too. So to so actually spend some time in the, in the city and, and get, gain a sense of community here was was really special. You know? Yeah, I love that. So let's talk about your latest album and you just things have been like going so well for you, right? You've had your first number one single with Too Sweet, which is it's crazy to me that that was your first number one single. What's that been like? That has to be life affirming. It's you know what it's it's really encouraging. You know, um, I feel like you know like it it has it put a lot of wind in, in my sails for sure it was really it felt wonderful it felt uh um vindicating i suppose to to release those songs that that very nearly did not make it out into the world you know so why is that well they weren't on the on too sweet was recorded around the album sessions and then was not and was sort of was chosen not not to be put on the album um and so it felt worthwhile at least being like you know some people might like this some people may not whatever you know but let's give it a chance let people hear it and and you know so it felt really wonderful to to do that and um and it's encouraging i say it's encouraging i suppose this tour which has been amazing and so rewarding and so um this was sold out before too sweet was released you know so so yeah. in that way it just means it's kind of like it's been a, it's been a real gift because it it these shows were were gonna happen anyway. They were sold out anyway, and then to have this song that that 
got such a reaction to add that to the set list afterwards so it feels like this little glorious cherry on top you know what i mean so it's, and it's it, so funny how you don't know what song is going to hit what song is going to you know yeah you yeah. have a reaction like that with your fans like you said it almost didn't make it on the album so that's super exciting i want to talk a little bit about your collaborations because you have been collaborating with a lot of people you have noah khan and mavis staples and you had allison russell up on the stage last night opening for you and you guys collaborated so how does this come about do you just like call them and say hey do you want to do a song together do they call you sometimes sometimes okay. you have a relationship with the artist um you know and, and you know them you you know you might get a message being like hey you know um what do you think of this track or would love to talk to you about something or even just get together sometimes it's supernatural like that mm -hmm. um and uh, sometimes it, it's it's different you know like i i i i'd met mavis you know i'd met mavis before we we had worked together uh i believe but i don't think i, I didn't have her number you know what i mean uh to reach out so so there's 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 um so yeah, they 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 come about differently, you know. Each each one is is different. Uh, okay. But uh, in the case of like Alison uh, Russell or um, or Bedouin on the last two EPs, I was recording uh, in a studio that that Bedouin you know works out of quite a bit, and and um, and that was such a natural process. It was like you know, hey, we should you know sit down and throw some ideas around one day, and that's what we did, and came away with this song that. I really love and that you are and with Alison Russell it was you know I had the demo and, and sent it to her and was like look I would love this is I wrote this as a duet and would love to would love to duet it with you if, you, if you're feeling up to it so that's I always I get to perform it on this tour I love that mm -hmm. yes totally yeah so speaking of collaborations who would be your dream collaborator dead or alive any artist of all time I don't know I, I don't spend too much time thinking about it who would I okay you know, um, dream collaborator, dead or alive. Um, my goodness. Honestly, I don't know. I okay. Don't know. Probably yeah. be some some side. Yeah. Samuel Beckett or something like that. Like, okay, cool. You know, yeah. Um, non musical. You know. Yeah, yeah. So, like a writer or something. Yeah. yeah. I hear you're an avid reader. What are you reading right now? Um, what am I reading right now? Nothing what of. What do you recommend? What's what a book? Would I recommend. What did I read recently? Um, something that I was really enjoying. Uh, up till recently, until I believe I misplaced the book. Um, this is Happiness by Niall Williams is one of the, the last books I was reading. What did I just? I was more on the road. I was I was reading to kind of switch my brain off a little bit. So you might laugh, but I, I think the one of the last books I just finished was uh, was. Uh, was a Frank Herbert like sci-fi you know was yeah, was yeah. Dune, Dune Messiah was the the sequel to his Dune his Dune book so um uh that was the last one and I was just kind of enjoying the ex you know existing in a different world for, yeah. for a bit of time you know? escapism I mean that's it was. The it's reading absolutely escapism. totally totally yeah speaking of touring you've been touring pretty a lot you've been touring extensively um probably since Take Me to Church came out, which was what, over 10 years ago now. Yes. How, how do you take care of yourself, you know, physically and mentally? How do you make sure that you stay healthy when you're on the road so often? Um, Yeah, that's, that is honestly probably the most challenging part of, of the job, you know, apart from, because I mean, that is, that is the energy that you, that, that it's in that and in that maintenance that you have the energy to get it on stage at the end of a day very often yeah. a very busy day yeah. um so for me like trying to get sleep trying to get meaningful sleep is probably the most challenging and i find that if you can keep up some sort of routine that's of moving your body and you know there's all sorts of stuff like i'm you know relying on stuff like meditation and stuff like that and uh, yeah and to sort of regulate my central nervous system yeah to, absolutely um, can we talk a little bit about your songwriting? Mm -hmm. um, I love your lyrics. I think your lyrics are just like so nuanced and so layered. And I enjoy kind of digging through them and trying to figure them out. And there's a lot of religious undertones and literary undertones. You have a beautiful voice like that. There's no denying that. And you were a singer in school. When did you come to the realization that you're not only a singer, but you're a songwriter and a really gifted songwriter? You play your own instruments and you have these lyrics that people 
really resonate with. And I think that's part of the reason your fans are so dedicated is the lyrics are just so fun to get lost in and so mm -hmm. interesting. So mm -hmm. I guess, how do you approach lyrics? Has it changed since you kind of became big and famous after Take Me to Church? Or is it a similar process before you became this guy that sells out the forum three nights in a row? Yeah, well, thank you very much. Um, I think, you know, your relationship with the work changes as you grow and you become older. And so your relationship with yourself changes. And I think the the work always reflects that, you know, and, and that's that's part of, I think, just being an artist in no matter what you're doing. Um, I think, you know, from from starting out, like you never re have this realization of like, oh, yeah, I'm good at this. I think what you you're, you're just making it up as you go along. You yeah. know, that was always the case for me. You're just you're just you're making it up as you go along. You're going like, does this feel right? Yeah. OK. Um, do I like it? Yeah. OK. Um, I guess this is the song. And that is, you know, the the tools with which you you analyze the work or look at the work change as you get older and, and maybe the, the lens through which you view it and what you want to say, et cetera, changes. But it's always I think the, the less you, you know, obviously there's a lot of cerebral thinking when it comes to puzzling, doing the kind of puzzling work of how how do I go about putting this together? Mm -hmm. yeah. but the overriding thing is gut is instinct and is something that's felt you know does this feel right and and if it feels right to you and people say this all the time you know not just you know this is something that's said constantly if you're resonating with it chances are other people are going to resonate with it too you know so yeah and it has to be such a good feeling to just have that validation i would imagine it's it's never as good as the feeling of writing it you know whatever it, if people okay. yeah. it, if people connect with it, that's that's a gift. It's mm -hmm. great. And it and it feels it's there's something gratifying about that, certainly. Um, but the 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 emotional feeling, the actual experience of writing a work that didn't exist is mm -hmm. is, is 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 a deeper, more kind of uh, um, resounding, uh, gratifying feeling. You feel yeah. it, it, it's it's like nothing else, you know, so. I write myself, so I completely understand and agree that agree with that. Thank you so much. It was such a pleasure talking to you and Thank have you. so much fun at your show tonight. And thank you so much. We'll do yeah, it. yeah. Good luck with everything. We're big fans. Thank you.